Hello, this is going to be a short video about a molecular orbital theory. And we're going to start just with a quick review that we make molecular orbitals like psi from a combination of atomic orbitals, phi 1 plus phi 2, say for hydrogen, H2, then phi 1 might be a, a 1s orbital on the first hydrogen, and phi 2 might be a 1s orbital on the other hydrogen, and what we're going to do is com make some linear combination of these uh, to, to, to make the orbital, uh, molecular orbital. So, now, to do this, there's a whole uh, lot of maths, and we use the variation principle, which says the lowest energy is best, or the lowest energy we can calculate is closest to the reality. So, um, when we use that, I mean, we start with the time-independent Schrodinger equation, and then we find uh, E, and then the lowest energy is best, so we look for the minimum, so what we do is differentiate with respect to C1. We substitute in uh, C1 and C2 and phi1, we substitute this expression up here for the wave function into uh, this expression here, and there's a whole lot of maths I'm not going to go through. And so what we end up with is a relationship which can be expressed in terms of a matrix, and the matrix is like so, H11 minus E, S11, H12 minus E, S12, H1, sorry, 2, 1 minus E, S2, 1, and H2, 2 minus E, S2, 2. That matrix multiplied by C1 and C2 is equal to some uh, zero vector. And what that means is it means that the determinant is zero. Now, uh, in the determinant, it turns out that we only have one unknown, which is the energy, because h i j is equal to some integral of uh, wave function i multiplied by h and uh, operating on j over all space and Sij is equal to the integral of uh, phi i, complex conjugate, just multiplied by phi j d tau. So those things look horrendous, but in the end, what they are is just simply numbers. And generally, we can calculate those for uh, atomic orbitals. And then what we do is we combine them to make molecular orbitals. Now, what we're going to use here is Huckel theory. What this says is that H i j is equal to alpha if i equals j. It equals beta if i and j are adjacent. And equals zero otherwise. And Sij is equal to one if i equals j and equals zero otherwise. So if we come back to our hydrogen molecule here.
we come back to our hydrogen molecule here and we make what's called a secular determinant then with that secular determinant what we do is we um, put in values now we've got H1 and H2 here so for H11 the rule is if I equals J we get an alpha and SIJ uh, if I equals J we get 1 so that's alpha minus E we get in the top left hand corner and the next one H12 uh, that's uh, beta and S12 is 0 so that's minus 0 E I'm not going to draw anything in here but you can imagine in there there's a minus 0 E but uh, we don't need that, so we'll just uh, cross that out and leave it. Um, the bottom corner, again, uh, 1 and 2 are adjacent, so H21 uh, is beta, and H22 in this corner is again alpha, and it's minus E. Now, I should say this Huckel theory, uh, in the way that it's written here, this works for equivalent orbitals. And so we've got two 1s orbitals on the hydrogen, and uh, and this is this is what we've got. So, in some ways, this this video I should have said this before is this is really about uh, molecular orbital theory and secular determinants. And uh, what we can do is solve this. Uh, we know that the determinant is equal to zero. Uh, it must be equal to zero because of this uh, equation we have here on the left. It must be zero because of this equation here. And uh, But before we solve that, what we're going to do is divide by beta in the matrix and make, and make it look like this. And here, x is equal to alpha minus e over beta. So that's just the same matrix now except it's simplified. And to find the determinant of the 2 by 2 is nice and straightforward. We just multiply the leading diagonal, so we get, uh, so that determinant is equal to, just put this in brackets, just a reminder, so that we get x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. There we have the difference of two squares, so that's x plus 1 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. That means that x is equal to either 1 or minus 1. Now, from our expression for x, we can see that e is going to be equal to um, alpha minus x times beta. And so what we get for our energies are alpha plus beta and alpha minus beta. Now, it turns out alpha plus beta is lowest in energy because alpha and beta are negative. And if we draw a little molecular orbital diagram, we've got hydrogen here. So when they're isolated hydrogen atoms, it turns out these the energies of the orbitals for 1s orbitals is alpha. And in this uh, simplified Huckel theory, or Huckel approximation, we get the alpha plus beta and the alpha minus beta states. And we have one electron on each hydrogen, so we put them together and put them in like that. So that means that the energy of two hydrogens is equal to 2 alpha, and the energy of H2 is equal to 2 alpha plus 2 beta, which is lower. There's also something called the bond order that we can calculate, and so the bond order, well, for the bond order, this is half the number of bonding, electrons minus the number of anti-bonding electrons. Half the number of bonding, that's half the number of 
anti-bondings, and that's the bond order. So here, uh, I'm going to call it the, the BO bond order is equal to a half. Well, here, this lower state, the uh, energy of a molecular orbital is lower, so that's a bonding orbital, and we've got two electrons in there. Here, the uh, other one at the higher energy there, that is at a higher energy, uh, so that's an antibonding, but it doesn't have any electrons in it, so that's a zero. So it turns out the bond order is equal to one for H2. Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop this video now, and I'm going to come back with a second video where we're going to look at slightly more uh, complicated uh, systems. So that's, uh, but that's a sort of quick review for uh, what secular determinants are and giving the example of hydrogen and how we make a little molecular orbital diagram and um, then looking at the bond order.